Okay everybody, this is Mike Rowland from Central Kansas and I'm showing you some of my work in the last few weeks and months. I hope you can see it. It's This is the bigger of the chargers or energizers I've been building and it has the battery size cables on it. Tape job there. And um, like here is one of those 30 amps switches that I put on this big energizer so that I can take like six aught wire for like lawnmower size battery cables and switch it back and forth from sulfation desulfation mode to generator mode here's a big cap it really doesn't need to be that big uh, on this other side of what I'm calling the beast the, you know it's bigger than my other one so he just sort of got that name but it's got the extra switches on the side here so you can turn down the power on it if you wanted to charge a small battery and of course the input drops and then of course here's a battery this is an elm battery converted elm battery and I have many of those uh, I don't know if you can see this really rinky-dink circuit here. I got. I just got wires coming out with one post and diode soldered. There's really nothing to it. And this is the trigger I got hanging there right now. I don't have the trigger hooked up because I'm still experimenting with the two trigger wires. Which so far I just end up with a capacitor in line. And then the generator mode diodes are right here. Uh, you'll see the diodes there. There's a pack of four across the bolt on each side and this goes to my switch to give me generator mode. I have two modes now. And there's that big baby. This thing is heavy. You can't hardly lift it up. It's so heavy. And then also I've been working on a flash bank for it. Uh, and here's my, by the way, here's the way I do my switch on the wall. I got my power source hooked to a, to a um, amp meter right there. And I just flick the switch and hang that uh, ring, copper ring on the bolt. And uh, that's my run battery connection. And then I'm working, well, here's the old one. The old one is a, an old uh, uninterrupted power source box. Just gutted that out years ago and inside there I put this cap pulser and over here we've got our 5-5 five, five timer section and just something silly coming out the side to adjust it with a pencil and there's another adjuster there in the bridge rectifier and then a few miscellaneous caps. Now like this it doesn't get hot. That heat sink doesn't get hot but if I hook the big bunch of them, see here's my big bunch of flash caps. Huge pack 55,000. Of course that little thing gets hot. So I'm making this. I'm making this, uh, taking this heat sink from a computer how, uh, the old pavilion days where they had the static uh, cooling, no fan on it. And it's, it works out to be a nice heat sink. And here are, here are five. Um, this is to start with 14 gauge wire and five uh, deflection type transistors out of the televisions and I just stitch that wire through there like you were darning or something that's 14 gauge house wire it comes out on the back here I'll see if you can see it I just stitch that through there that's your collector and emitter and then my trigger will go in there and um, I won't have to have like a lot of traces uh, fancy traces yet Anyways, that's the best I can do right now. Then here's your uh, 
where it fits in and then this is your heat sink that goes on there too on the outside so when it's done unlike the last one I'll have a heat sink here as you can see uh, the heat sink goes on the side of the box like that and these are the caps that go with it and I also have 14 gauge uh, that was tough to put that 14 gauge wire on there and without damaging the caps the caps are two 50 volt caps one standing on top of the other so I can get a ceiling of 100 volts and this baby kicks 7 8 amps here at the back this this kicks out 7 or 8 amps of good raw pulse and that's going to be hooked to the big beast right here now here's the the little one again the little pulser and I've been using that effectively for a while now over here you'll see two other boxes one stacked on the other this was my original one on the top here that I had posted on on the science energy form and uh, let me show you the inside of that again I, I did have some pictures here is the little coil real small maybe you know a couple inches or so tiny little box you know with a one little card there uh, with a cap and a resistor I don't know if you can see that but I showed this before and then a computer power supply over there and so that's it you have a four channel board a coil computer power supply over there and then this is the front it has its own built in amp meter let me get that uh, wire on there alright so there's there's the the smallest one you can do pen light batteries with that all day then over here is the next one this is the second one I've done it has um, no power supply it has all the wires in and out right here and I have one wire for each channel I got a lot of wires coming out here and they're heavy 30 amp wire um, here's your here's my four channels and now I have this one is an air core you'll see right here is an air core like out of a welder a spool from a welder just wrap some wire around there I did try putting some ferrite down in those gaps and that slows the frequency down I don't see any profound changes in charging I think you pretty much get a one-to-one -one, one in and one out and um, all I have on this box is a knob a volume knob or if you want to call it that a, a uh, a resistor right here on the front to turn that up and down and down here you can see it is a switch you can hear it click one switch for high and low because I'm I've got some like right here on the side there's a board there and that has some resistors on it all right and then my cap is over here my cap is out of an old dishwasher uh, kind of bolts through the front it's got a pole a post I mean a bolt see that bolt below the volume control and it's bolted through the frame to hold itself up it's a 10 microfarad capacitor AC capacitor found in every dishwasher or many many dishwashers okay so I just thought I'd give you guys uh, uh, some shots of this and I'm kind of jerky but and I couldn't find my tripod there's the first one there's the second one which gives a lot more power uh, that coil is a lot bigger the circuits are all the same the MJL 
two 1194s, but the coil is way different in size. And so, of course, there's better charging. And then, if you look over there, you'll see the great big coil. Instead of like a quarter pound of wire, that one there is seven pounds. That's a seven pounds. It's in one of an old electrical box, like for uh, putting your power meter in. Big heavy duty box. And I can't really show the heat sink down below, but it's down there. And the, and the uh, board is down under there. And I have to take that top board off to see the lower board. <clears throat> but these are my beginnings. And that thing charges that battery right here. It charges that battery in just minutes. When I hook this up to that big one, that big charger, it runs that battery up so fast. It's incredible. And I, of course, I got my uh, red wire here, and it goes on on that post over there, and so on. And uh, so I want to thank each and every one of you on the Science Energy Forum for your instruction and for helping me to to gain an understanding. I'm a beginner. I've been here six months. I've really learned a lot. Thank you guys. Bye.